This video serves to summarize, very shortly, the critical period of American history. The period between American Declaration of Independence and the calling of the Constitutional Convention in 1787. This is a very specific period of American history in that it is one of the periods where Americans entered the drama of political history as the Declaration of Independence tells the story. The Declaration had a pre-political stage where there is no government and where men are endowed with rights and are created equal. Then human beings create government by consent to secure those rights. If government becomes destructive of these ends, the Declaration asserts that it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. The critical period of American history is America's first stab at laying foundations for new governments and organizing powers of government into forms that they thought would effect their safety and happiness. These governments were the Articles of Confederation, and the state governments of the revolutionary period. Each were failures. The Articles failed because they did not provide a vigorous enough government with independent authority to make the laws and enforce the laws that it had agreed to make. The Articles had national aspirations as a government. They sought to govern the United States as a single country. But they so divided power that the national aspirations were undercut by local prejudices. The state constitutions failed because they gave almost all the governing power to the legislatures, and there were not sufficient executive or judicial independence to resist the legislatures. This meant there was nothing to resist hasty, ill-considered, passionate policies often embraced by the legislatures. Why did the Americans adopt these governments? The Americans built these governments because they made a judgment about how to avoid the problems associated with the British monarchy, and their governments would not, they pledged, make the same British mistakes. Why did they make the Articles of Confederation? Look at this chart. They looked at the British government and said to themselves that the problem with the British government was too much centralization. If too much centralization is the problem, decentralizing power must be the answer. Thus, the Articles, which decentralized power in a confederacy where each state maintained an effective veto over the national government. The pendulum swung from the extreme of centralized power to the extreme of decentralized power. Perhaps there would be a better way of solving this problem, combining elements of centralizing power and decentralizing power. This will be America's partly national, partly federal constitution. Why did they make legislatively dominated state constitutions? They looked at the British monarchy and said to themselves that the problem was the British monarchy was the executive power and the legislative power. The powers to make the laws and the powers to enforce the laws were united in one hand. If the problem was that the power was united in one hand, perhaps the best way to avoid that problem would be to put the power into many hands. Many hands would be the answer to the power being in one hand. Thus, the legislative vortex about which Madison complains in Federalist 48. The pendulum swung from the extreme of one hand to the extreme of many hands. Perhaps there would be a better way of solving this problem by separating the executive from the legislative powers more effectively so that some power is in one hand and some is in many hands. The founders learned during the critical period that rights can be threatened in a variety of ways. The right 
The, the threat to rights from an all-powerful monarchy was obvious for all Americans to see. But rights could also be threatened from a government unable to keep the peace or gain respect from other countries. Rights could be threatened from a government that does stupid things or undermines the stability necessary for one's property and hence one's liberty to operate effectively. These powers, these problems, weak government and stupid government would be America's problems 